Okay, so let's talk um, Kaleido style. We're still in Kaleido style. And let's talk the graphic status and color palette. So I've drawn, you know, just a triangle here. Um, and I will get into the drawing um, tools in the next one. But I want to kind of talk about how you can set up your graphic status and your palettes. Sometimes it's nice to have that idea before you start um, drawing and bringing things in. So this graphic status, again, as I said previously, this kind of outline one is, of course, your stroke. Okay. And this back here is your fill. So fills in between here. Okay. So again, if you have a color palette, you know, you just come down here, select, let me just select something so you can see it change <laughs> um, it, to this. I don't know, duty something. Let's do like at least a pink. Now, the reason why it's changing here is because I've selected this. So I can just go outside of here and I can select something different and it not change um, the stroke of my object. I'm going to go ahead and select it here so you can kind of see how things change up. So right now, if I'm just drawing, you know, an outline of something, I'll keep this here um, in a color or black or whatever the case is. And I do this no contour color. So if I want to change the fill to something, I just bring it back here. Let's say I pick a color um, and let's say I started drawing. I'm like, no, 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 I need to have that off. You can always go back to no fill. Let me just flip it back over and you can kind of toggle between these two at any time. Um, so, but again, you got to kind of select the fill first and then, you know, change the color or change it to no fill. You can do the same thing with the stroke. If you ever want the stroke to go away, the color, you just, and then you can toggle back. Okay. So the cool thing here is, um, there's the transparency. So you can always change up the transparency. This is always really cool when really you're using the fill. So let's say we have this filled like we did and you want to show the transparency and you want to like layer things on top of one another, that's always a fun thing to do. So you can always mess with that transparency as much as you want. Um, now, if you ever want to change the stroke, the stroke, so you kind of, you, you know, you see where your stroke is, you double click it and you have this wonderful effects pop up. Um, so here's your line. You can always change the thickness. So let's say 10 point and you can apply thickness and see how it applies. Um, you can always create start arrows. Now I have a closed object, so you can't necessarily see it. Um, let me actually <laughs> make this a little less. You can see it down below. You have a little bit of a preview here. So you can have a start arrow and end arrow. These are great when we start building design lead sheets that would go into technical packs, but potentially for drawing, you may not necessarily need it. Types of stroke. So again, you can always have solid, dotted. Um, it's going to apply to each one. So you can kind of check out some different ones. Now these are some different stitches. Um, you will probably use this more. You'll end up using this when you actually do flat sketches. I'm not sure for your graphic design if you would necessarily want or need that, but just to know that all these different types are in here. Um, and we'll get into how to make specific lines um, in another tutorial. Um, let me show you kind of some different patterns that you can use. Again, here's, you know, um, you know, first you would need to have it filled. Um, let me do it in like kind of a lighter color so you can see it. And you can apply all these different stitch ones. So here's a diagonal one. Again, this, I think, I would say most times we use this more when we're doing flat sketches and then we're um, putting in line plans to kind of show the different textures of fabrics. But who knows, you may want this in your graphic design as well. But as you can see, this kind of shows different fabrics. So like um, a twill, whether you're using like kind of a twill, um, things like that. So you can kind of play, you know, uh, this looks, you know, very like a chiffon or something. Um, so just different patterns you can always um, use. Motifs, now I will say motifs is how you kind of get the different prints that you create in either Kaleido print, knit, or weave. So again, we'll come back to this um, um, later on in the semester. And then potentially shading. So let me actually <laughs> take this pattern off. Oh, I can just come over here and remove it. Um, 
And you might want to use these kind of different shadings for here. So with this, you know, I had the yellow on, so I have the yellow here, and you can keep the black, or maybe you want to have it go to like an orange. I don't know. <laughs> and you can create a linear, um, that kind of the circle, square, path, whatever you want it to be, and then you'd always just push apply. And again, you can always play with these orientations, moving it across, making fun things. Now this you might want to use, I could see this being definitely used in graphic design. They've used it in the past. So these are just kind of some places where here you can apply some different things, and then you always close. So here's some different graphic statuses. Um, and again, if you let's say you want to save this, you would go ahead and create um, a new one here. And so now I've created it down here. Um, and then you can always save your graphic status to your um, to your flash drive um, and calling it, I don't know, your whatever you want to call your graphic status of a certain date or however you want to somehow remember it. So you just kind of, whatever you have in here, you can click to add current and then it'll remember it. So now if I, let's say I go back to this wonderful orange color, um, I have it saved here. So I can always kind of, I can toggle back at any time and add these different things. Um, okay, so let's just do an orange for these other things. Okay, so now again, you can always create a palette and save it you know, and you can, then you can load it back up. So you can save a certain palette, call it your fax t-shirt palette or your sunset palette or a date. However, again, you want to name it, you always name it and save it to your flash drive, create those folders and all of that kind of system. Um, and then you can always load the palette back and open it. But let's say you're trying to kind of create a palette and granted, this is my like catch all palette. There's nothing specific. Um, so you can always go into modify selected color. So you do need a color to be selected and you go into modify and this might seem a little bit familiar. I think we have these in pretty much every software where you can start to mess around with certain levels of colors and create something new. Um, this is also if you ever have a call out um, for certain very specific colors, whether it's RGB or CMYK, you can just copy and paste it. Um, right here. And when it comes to using UGA colors for the fax t-shirt project, this is where you can really just copy and paste the code here. But what's really great when you want to start developing a um, color palette for other projects, you can go into your Pantone book and this is the entire Pantone selection. Um, and you really just double click, it can show it to you. And then it's really a click and drag operation to add any color to your palette. So whether, and, and you can always like search for, um, you know, search for a certain Pantone color. You can just go in here and this is like the whole spectrum, like of all this, and then you can always find here as well. Also, if you have brought something in, and I can, I'll show you this in another tutorial, you can always double click the color and it will then show you the closest Pantone match. So that's also an option. So here's where you can maybe build out your specific, you know, um, you know, you can start building out your own specific, oh, I replaced with <laughs> my eyes are going. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can start to build out your um, palette. You can then save it. Um, and if you always just, if you even want to keep your Pantone open, you can always do that as well. You can have as many, um, many windows open as you want. But again, you can always just go into the modify um, and, and get it that way. So, um, Hopefully that helps explain a little bit more the graphic status and the palette. And next we'll get into some drawing.